Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We are here today to talk about the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. Now, it's not a big secret anymore because NVIDIA did take the wraps off this product last week, uh, just before GDC. So we know a lot about the details of this, what it's based on. And if you pay attention to the GPU world, GPU world you already know that the uh, equivalency of this has been out since essentially August in the form of the Pascal-based GTX Titan. X. So uh, that means we, we know a little bit about the specifications, but it's worth going over again what this is. This is uh, the big brother to the GP104. This is the GP102 GPU. It has 3,584 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1,480 megahertz, a boost clock of around 1,600 megahertz, 224 texture units, 84 or 88 ROPs, uh, and interestingly, 11 gigabytes of memory that runs at 11 gigabits per second. A couple of interesting things there, right? So this is an 11 gigabyte memory capacity on this as opposed to the Pascal card that has 12 gigabytes of memory. The memory frequency is not necessarily related to that. Uh, the 11 gig capacity is because of the uh, removal of a couple of uh, GP or, uh, TPC units inside the GPU, uh, bringing us down to a 352 bit memory bus. So there are 12 32-bit memory controllers on GP102 GPU. They removed one of those in order to lower cost, improve yields, you know, whatever you, you want to call it, create differentiation in the product line, giving us 352 bits of memory interface. Now you may remember the GTX 970 fiasco. Uh, in order to avoid any of that potential headache, they just basically went with screw it, we're going to have a, an odd sounding uh, amount of memory on this. So we're at 11 gigabytes, uh, all full speed, all full performance. Uh, it's nice to see people are learning from, from previous mistakes. Now, we did mention the 11 gigabits per second memory, and that is one of the main differentiation points in the performance of this card versus the Titan X. Um, due to or just working with Micron and getting a little bit better memory speed, they were able to boost the G5X memory from 10 gigabits to 11 gigabits, which actually equates to a total of just a little bit higher total memory throughput on the 1080 Ti versus the Titan X. 484 gigabytes versus 480 gigabytes. It's still a 250 watt TDP graphics card uh, with one 8 pin and one 6 pin power connector in addition to the power you get through the PCI Express bus. Um, the most important item of this video card, other than its performance obviously, is the price. NVIDIA announced it last week, $699. Now, first, that's an insane amount of money to pay for any kind of component that goes into a computer, whether it be a video card, a processor, or whatever. But considering <clears throat> that the Titan X launched at over $1,200, and still, if you can find it for sale today, is priced over $1,200, uh, that's considerably less expensive than I think many people were predicting. Some of the media that, that I was hanging out with just before the announcement actually predicted an $899 price tag or $799 price tag. Uh, so $699 is, uh, is a nice kind of change of pace there. And if you compare that to where the GTX 1080 launched at, the base price of the T GTX 1080 was $599. So this is only $100 bucks more than that. Uh, and considering the performance delta, we see somewhere between 25 and 35%. It actually seems like a, quote, good deal in terms of high-end uh, gaming products. It's all going to be variable from there. So specifications out of the way, the card itself is going to look very familiar to you. If you've seen a GTX 1080 Founders Edition card, it has the same kind of blower style design. It has the same size vapor chamber cooler as the Titan X, bigger and more robust than exists on the GTX 1080. Uh, it still has two connections for SLI. You've got an 8-pin and a 6-pin power connector. Uh, you have the full back plate on this as well, uh, with one half of it being removable if you have cards directly abutting each other for SLI configurations. Uh, the one big change, I guess, is on the display output connectivity. You still have three DisplayPort, one HDMI, which the 1080 and the, pa and the Pascal based Titan X have had, but they removed the DVI connection. And they did that so that there was better airflow uh, for this card. That's how they're able to get to a little bit higher clocks, um, and you'll see a little bit lower fan noise level as well under a full gaming load, even compared to the, uh, the Titan X graphics card itself. So a quick overview of performance. <clears throat> Obviously, I want you to go to PCPro.com and check out the review if you want to see all the details, because we still are using our capture-based frame rating analysis, uh, frame time percentiles. All that information is included in there. We're just going to go over a couple of high-level results uh, for this. Obviously, this is you know a card kind of meant towards 4K gaming, but 2560 by 1440 is important as well. 
Just take, for example, uh, a game like Fallout 4. Uh, on the GTX 1080 Ti, is running at 70 frames per second at 4K, compared to 49.5 frames per second on the GTX 1080, a difference of 41%. This card is 41% faster than the GTX 1080 at 4K in Fallout 4. Take uh, something that has been uh, the bane of our existence forever, that is GTA 5 at 4K, runs just over 61 frames per second on the new 1080 Ti, and 45 frames per second on the GTX 1080 original, a difference of 37% there. You can see that some of these deltas are pretty substantial. If you compare it to the Titan X, the, the difference is gonna be plus or minus two to 4% in general. And in, in pretty much all cases, this one is gonna be a little bit of head. Like an Endurance Rally at 4K, it's 6% faster. Uh, Gears of War, it's 2% faster, 2% faster in uh, GTA 5. So it's, it's really, really close to in line with the performance of the Titan X, but at a significant price delta. Uh, also in line with this, and but not directly related to the 1080 Ti itself, is the fact that <clears throat> the GTX 1080 got a price reduction when this card was announced. So it wouldn't make sense to have the GTX 1080 be $599 while this card was $699. So instead, uh, the new base price of the GTX 1080 is $499. So now your Delta is $200. Bucks. You go from $499 to $699 if you want the TI variant of the GTX 1080. And that nets you a pretty reasonable 25 to 30% of performance delta. Uh, and depending on if you're gaming at high resolutions, high frame rates, that can actually be pretty impactful on your gaming experience, whether you're doing VR gaming or just you know standard 2D gaming, normal gaming, if you will. Um, it is a Founders Edition card launching first. It was pre-ordering uh, through NVIDIA.com. All of their add-in board partners will be able to sell Founders Editions in addition to having their custom designs, both custom PCB and custom cooled. So it's not kind of you know, controlled like the Titan X that, would, that was only sold through NVIDIA.com. Uh, so you will see you know, EVGA and ASUS and MSI and those guys come out with uh, their own variations of this that are gonna use you know, non-blower cooler designs uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, maybe some different PCB implementations We'll probably see the EVGA ICX uh, in integration on it as well. And overall, I have to say, I came away really impressed. You know, the, the noise levels are a little bit lower than Titan X. The performance is a little bit higher than Titan X. And the price is about $500 less than the Titan X as well. Keeping in mind that the Titan X was launched back in August of 2016. So it's been quite a while uh, since we have expected to see the release of the GTX 1080 Ti. Clearly, if you want the fastest consumer gaming graphics card today, uh, this is going to be it. There's really not any competition from AMD on that side. We didn't even mention any Radeon parts in the comparison here uh, in our video review. Uh, the Fury X, uh, which is still the highest performing card that AMD has had out, in a while, you know, it's losing by 77, 80, 86, 145, 105%. It's losing by a lot in some of these games, uh, both at 25 by 14 and 4K resolution. So it's not just limited to the highest resolution stuff. So clearly AMD needs um, Vega to come out sooner rather than later. And Nvidia is preparing for them uh, by putting another beastly video card out on the market for enthusiasts to buy. So make sure you go to PCPro.com, check out the full review. We'll have all the, the pictures, the graphs, the performance data. Uh, if you want to see detailed power consumption numbers, here's a hint, it's right at about 250 watts. Uh, all of that is available at PCPro.com and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash PCPer.